Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome back to the Cyber Underground. I bet you missed me, I missed you. I've been gone for a couple of weeks. I'm Dave the Cyber Guy, your host of the Cyber Underground here every week on Fridays at 1 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time. And once again, I'm here with Hal the Networking Guy. Welcome, hey, buddy. Dave. Thanks for thanks, having me back Thanks again. for coming back. Uh, need to tell the audience that we teach for Kapiolani Community College, and that's part of the University of Hawaii system. We're out there uh, just about a little less than a mile from the white sands of Waikiki Beach right down from the, the crater at Diamond Head. On the slopes of Diamond Head. Yeah, so we got a prime spot, ocean view. But uh, I know before you start hating us, uh, we do work. We work hard. So yeah, that's why we're doing the show. <laughs> Let's talk about some of the, the current events that's going on. Uh, yeah, sure. We had the, uh, the masterfully done Helsinki conference <coughs> this mm -hmm. week. And, uh, and uh, Russian hacking has been at the top of everybody's list to talk about. And I thought, maybe we ought to take a different turn on this. I mean, everybody's talking about Russian hacking. There's also Chinese that hack us, and there's also North Koreans that hack us under the guise of uh, what we call Hidden Cobra. That's their yeah. nickname, right? DHS calls them Hidden Cobra. And, uh, but they've all got different motives, right? So let's, let's examine the motives and uh, the end game for all these hacking attacks against the United States and try to examine uh, you know, how a hacker thinks. Because a lot of people want to get into hacking, they think it's just cool. But really, what's your end game? What do you want to do? But when you hack, uh, there's a lot of barriers in between you and that skill set. So you have to work your way up to it. And when you work your way up to it, you can accidentally break some laws on the way. Or you can break them well, on purposely. purpose. <laughs> yeah, right? So you're going to have to have some ethical boundaries and decide who you are before you go into this. It's, uh, it's like giving somebody uh, a loaded gun and saying, don't shoot anybody except for that guy over there. You know, it's, it's, it's a very focused uh, topic. So let's, let's examine that. Mm -hmm. let's, uh, let's go over Russia now. The Russia, Russia hacks us and tried to get into our elections. And we already know they, they attacked our election voting machines in 20 states. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and they're getting into the, uh, the DNC emails. I, I, they sent out 29 spear phishing attacks, which is focused on people in the DNC. Uh, and only one of those addresses was actually valid, you know, a current employee. And it turned out, I guess it was Podesta. And they got him. They got him. On, on the yeah. first try. I gave up his password. Um, let's talk about what, what are the, what's Russia actually after? What do you think meddling in our elections is going to do for Russia? Well, I mean, it, it, it seems pretty clear that, that those attacks were meant to influence the election in some way. Uh, many say that uh, there's been kind of an ongoing grudge match between Hillary Clinton and Vladimir, Vladimir Putin. So the, the, the last person he wanted to see elected would have been uh, Hillary Clinton. So maybe he was, you know, let's see if we can if we can influence things against her, if we can make it tougher uh, on, on Hillary. And that, I mean, it's just, it's just speculation, but that's what you know, a lot of uh, people seem to think the, uh, the, the main motive probably was. A lot of social stuff too, right? They added stuff to Facebook that was false, mm -hmm. you know, fake memes and attacks and fake news articles that pointed you to fake news sites. Yeah. That actually look like real news sites, but it, and it was mostly anti-Hillary, yeah. uh, you know, news. They weren't a lot of uh, anti-Trump uh, news items that 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 they were pointing you to. And it, I think it did help the Republicans in the, in that election. And I think the I think the frightening thing after Helsinki is what I'm realizing is because of the way our president presented himself and did not address. The elephant in the room. Uh, I think that that was a signal to Vladimir Putin and the Russians that Trump would like help again in the midterm elections coming up. And I'm, I'm hoping that's not going to happen 
But we've already seen reports of three people running for Congress that have already been hacked. And, and the signature of the hacks have pointed back towards Russia. Yeah, it certainly doesn't seem like anything's uh, happened that would deter them from continuing uh, in, in these efforts you know, to try to influence. And, and uh, it may not be you know, trying to influence uh, things for one particular candidate. It might be just to kind of sow disruption. I mean, if, if we're kind of chaotic and, and divided and disorganized, then it's like a zero-sum game. Russia feels stronger and, and you know, more influential. So if they Especially can just if we disrupt, destabilize and, and try to dismantle NATO. Well, if we do something, you know, like, like that, absolutely. That's, you know, I think the, the instability, I think you've hit on a good topic here. Russia wants the instability because a house divided cannot stand, as mm -hmm. Lincoln said. So it it's, favors Russia to have us unstable. We are a weaker foe, so that helps secure Russia. Mm -hmm. And I get it, right? That doesn't seem to help China. I think it's the exact opposite of what China wants. We hold so much debt for China. We are in debt to China. We borrowed so much from them that destabilizing the U.S. would actually harm China. Yeah, I, I think the, uh, the goal of most of the Chinese hacking is probably more espionage. They want to they want to gain uh, information, both what are about we up to? our government, about what our, our industries and you know, different corporations are doing. But it, it doesn't seem, as you said, it doesn't seem like you know, disrupting things would really favor them. They just want to, want to kind of get a leg up, some insider information, and know what's, what's going on and what's coming. More at the corporate level. level. Yeah, so yeah, that makes sense. Because if we had, you know, if, if God forbid China and America ever went to war, the first thing that would happen is China would lose all of its debt, right? America would just say, fine, we're at war. We absolve our set ourselves of all our debt. We owe you nothing. And China would just lose wholesale because that, just the interest alone on that debt is a large volume of the gross domestic product, right? So I don't think China wants that. So it seems like the two people attacking us, the two major powers, not mentioning North Korea yet, they're against each other. In a way, yeah. They're, they certainly have different goals. Different goals, right? So it, it's, it's a mindset. So that's a nation state goal, mm -hmm. right? And North Korea, I you know, really can't get him the fatty Kim the third thing. I can't nail him down yet. Uh, he seems to have different goals at different times, but I think all he really wanted was to be recognized as a world leader with the rest of the world leaders. And uh, NATO and everybody else kept thinking, no, no, we'll let him play on his own because he's guilty of so many human rights violations. In fact, the latest research on um, human slavery that happens worldwide, the latest information says most of it happens in North Korea, mm -hmm. right? Which, that's terrible. Um, and I agree we shouldn't really recognize that, that leader as a leader because he's abusing his power so, so horribly. So his, I think his goal was just to instill fear and gain knowledge about weapon systems and advance his nuclear weapons program so we would take him serious. Mission accomplished. Thanks again to our new presidential administration that validated everything that he wanted. So different goals. Let's, let's go down a level and talk about uh, hackers at, so China does this as a corporate thing most of the time. I mean, they've, they've stolen weapons secrets before, we know that, but it's more of a corporate thing. But oh, we should talk about this. I just read, uh, they now have an aircraft, and you could recognize it by the symbol on the tail, uh, but you can, you can Google this, is an aircraft that has a small laser that will fire a laser beam at the optics of spy satellites. To blind that. satellites. So when they want everything in a certain area to be completely off the grid, they can launch this aircraft and has several of these lasers, and it knows where the satellites are because mm -hmm. they're in clear view, right? And just fires this laser beam into the optics of those satellites and blinds whoever, like the United States, is observing. So they actually have weapons, which is like an anti-weapon, focused just on blinding us. That, that's a big investment. I mean, this was a huge aircraft, and so they're serious about blinding us. But that makes sense because we, we have a satellite system where we can 
we we can view you know almost any square inch of almost anywhere on the planet. Right. So it it makes sense if you wanted to you know delay some kind of response or or, or hide an action that you might want to. Might yeah. want to just blind somebody for a little yeah. while. Yeah, it's, it makes sense. Uh, that along with network hacking and uh, some kind of a, a radio dampening, uh, mm -hmm. you could effectively be invisible for a little while, right? But most of it, like you said, is corporate espionage. And I think it comes, it comes down to uh, intellectual pr property, yeah. and it comes down to uh, getting a, a monetary edge or a, a business edge, right? Because they compete with us so heavily. Uh, let's talk about within just the United States. Corporate, uh, corporate espionage can be enormous. I mean, we've had U.S. companies suing each other for decades sure. now over patent infringements. And you wonder, how could they have gotten that technology? Because when you look at the actual patent from the patent office, yes, I'm an enormous geek and I've read the patents from the patent office. Guilty. Anyway, you read the patents and it doesn't have that much information. It's just a basic outline, right? I couldn't build you an iPhone from the patents. That was just the technology, the patented piece of their technology, right? But then Samsung comes up with, the, with their Android phone, and remarkably, it's got almost all the features that the iPhone has. Hmm. It looks exactly like it. So of course, Apple and Samsung go to war. Um, but that's corporate espionage, and there's dozens of ways you can get into a corporation but that's one of the motivations. So a corporation would have to hire a hacker to infiltrate another company, either by networking or getting hired there. Or they might be able to find an insider. An insider, oh, the inside who's man is a bad attack, to, yeah. Somebody who's willing, oh, oh another paycheck? Mm -hmm. Great, I'll just double up. That's, most spies in America are made that way. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the worst one, I think, and I can't remember his name down, he uh, had big classes, it was in the 80s, if you remember this uh, person, sold out his entire CIA team in Russia, got them all arrested, and made several hundred thousand dollars while doing it. They caught him, of course, he's serving, I believe, a life sentence, or several in a row, because all those people that were caught were killed. Mm. So the inside man, that's the most devastating attack, mm -hmm. uh, I hate to say, which it brings us to one of those uh, those uh, security principles that we're always preaching, least privilege. Mm -hmm. Give them what they need to do to, their, to get their job done, and nothing more. And the insider threat, which is one of the uh, biggest threats that, that you have to worry about. Mitigating that threat is almost impossible sometimes. Mm -hmm. I mean, how do you know? Right? You have to do some serious research, and I think that's why security clearances take so long for, for DOD. Background checks, uh, job rotation, mandatory vacations, all those type of things are all meant to, to try to uh, mitigate that insider threat. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, the job rotations, I think people uh, fail to do uh, quite often. Mm -hmm. people, people put someone in a job and they get really good at that job and they leave them there because they don't want to disrupt the business. And uh, it's a, it's a, it's a double-edged sword, right? You get the efficiency of that one person, but if that person turns, and because of an inside man, or just gets sick, yeah, or gets a better job, you lose. You don't have anyone cross-trained to do that job. So job rotation, I think, yeah, that's a good point. Thanks for bringing that up. Let's uh, let's talk about uh, motivations of people getting into the field of hacking, and what they'd want to do with their newfound skill sets. Well, some people want to make money, uh, whether they do it legally or uh, illegally. There are people who uh, want to become activists. Hacktivists. Online. Yes. It's, it's called hacktivists. Hacktivists, yeah. yeah. And, and hack for a cause that, uh, that they're trying to promote. Right. Um, then, I mean, there's uh, cyber criminals online. There's skip kitties. There's, there's a whole, whole range of Let's talk more about those right after the break. We gotta pay some bills and we'll be right back. Until then, stay safe. 
Hello everyone, I'm DeSoto Brown, the co-host of Human Humane Architecture, which is seen on Think Tech Hawaii every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. And with the show's host, Martin Despang, we discuss architecture here in the Hawaiian Islands and how it not only affects the way we live, but other aspects of our life, not only here in Hawaii, but internationally as well. So join us for Human Humane Architecture every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. Hi everyone, I'm Andrea Gabrielli. I'm the host for Young Talents Making Way here on FinTech Hawaii. We talk every Tuesday at 11 a.m. about things that matters to tech, matter to science, to the people of Hawaii with some extraordinary guests. The students of our schools who are participating in science fair. So Young Talents Making Way every Tuesday at 11 a.m. only on FinTech Hawaii. Mahalo. Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed the break. I did. It's always my favorite part of the show. <laughs> Not really. Uh, <laughs> I hate, hate pausing, but it's a good time for us to, you know, sync up. Uh, we, we were just talking about uh, the different types of hackers, right? We got the hacktivists. We got the cyber criminals. Uh, we got um, script kitties. Let's describe script kitties. So script kitties are um, what we call uh, hackers who, who who really have a, a kind of a low skill level, uh, and so they 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 find scripts that other people have written, and they run those scripts against your, uh, your systems, against your networks, and you know they they, they can uh, exploit low hanging fruit. If, if if you have a, a well hardened network, probably can't get too far just as a script kitty. But be surprised how many uh, you know, networks do have vulnerabilities for which there have been published exploits and scripts that you don't need any any real skill level to to you be able just to execute use. them yeah we should uh, warn our audience though these uh, these scripts if you get them from a reputable haha uh, reputable uh, place like ex, uh, exploit-db.com uh, by uh, offensive security um, those are those are good scripts they've been validated and they're not going to do any harm however there are scripts that you can download that you think are working but are actually working against you and that can actually damage your machine and expose you to a hack and open up a command line on your machine for somebody else and let somebody in on a back door. So careful where you get these things. It's script kitties, K-I-D-D-I-E-S, not like a kitten. Not like cats. No, but like kids, like script kitties. So if you're a script kitty, um, download them from a reputable place like uh, offensive, offensive security. Uh, dot com has, has great stuff. And by the way, shout out to oh, the uh, offensive security guys. I'm going through your OSCP course right now. Fantastic stuff. I'm absolutely in love with it. Good job. So let's get back to uh, hackers. And so quick mention, Russian hackers attack in the U.S. Uh, probably got into that field because they wanted a good job. This was available and Russia trains them for free, right? Uh -huh. uh, problem there. We all do that, all our countries do that. We train professionals, but when they turn, we get snowed in. Yeah. Right? Because um, Snowden was trained, working for the NSA, on contract with, uh, he was working for Verizon at the time, right? Uh, with contract with the NSA, had all his clearances, and was uh, trained at least to the level where he could escalate privileges and create other accounts to gather information. And then he, uh, he air-gapped his way out. He had a USB drive where he put all his files on and he walked right out with it. Unbelievable, right? So these skill sets, and I have these, these apprehensions too. We train mm -hmm. our kids to do this and then we send them on to UH West that does the, the full ISA program and gives them even more skills. Um, what are your feelings about those kids taking the easy path and, and feeling that draw of money and going down ransomware or cybercrime? Well, there's always that fear that some of our students are going to take the, the dark side. Right. Um, but, uh, I think for the most part, uh, our students understand, uh, you know, the ethical if, uh, issues, especially professional ethics. Uh, you know, once you've done that, once you've gone down that that 
Doc Pat, that there's really no coming back. Right? If, if, you're, if you're working as a security professional uh, for a company or for, for, for uh, some government agency or whatever it is, they, they expect you to maintain you know, the, the highest professional ethical standards. And once you deviate from that, there's really no going back. And it gets easier. Yeah, and you're, yeah. You're, you're not gonna be employed in that field anymore. You're gonna be stuck with the dark side. That's gonna be the only, you know, the only side that you're gonna be allowed yeah. to play with. You still um, get work, but probably not working for the people you like to work for. But I, I really think the majority of our, our, our students uh, have the right motivations that they want to do good. Uh, you know, they not. Uh, they don't. Want, they want. Don't want to use their powers for evil. Uh, Was that from Spider Man? With great power comes great responsibility. Comes great responsibility. Yeah. <laughs> I love that line, and it applies to what we teach our students. And and when they come out on the other side with a skill set, um, they have to decide. You know, am I going to take that job and work for somebody else, or am I going to run my own business? I can do that. Mm -hmm. um, but when someone comes to you and says, "Hey, I need you to run these websites on the dark web," uh, you have to make a choice, right? I mean, you'll have the skill set to be able to do it, and it's good money. Um, but I should, well, let's go through who you work for when you do those skills, and you work for those kind of people. So you might work for organized crime. And uh, I, I have to emphasize, uh, let's go out there to the audience, there we are. Uh, I have to emphasize, when you do these dark skills for these dark people, uh, organized crime, so forth, uh, you're committing a crime, you do it well, you'll get a pat on the back, you'll make some good money. However, what you may not know is you just became a liability to that criminal. So as soon as somebody says there can, there can, there's a connection between you and the person that hired you, you're probably not going to be around very long. These are people that don't think twice about killing people. If they're going to do human trafficking, if they're stealing millions upon millions of dollars and they're doing ransomware, there's a very good chance that you're taking the chance that, you know, putting your life on the line. And uh, being off the grid electronically doesn't mean they can't find you and that you're taking a big chance. Uh, my students brought up, what if I stole $40 million and I could get away with it in one big hit and just go away and live on the beach forever. My, my response was, I don't think anybody that has $40 million would let that go. If you took $40 million, it's probably worth the investment to buy a hitman to go get you and bring back what's ever left, right? Or anybody who knows that you have the $40 million, even if you didn't steal it from them. That's right, that's right. Uh, They'll turn you in. They get, may yeah. want the $40 million. That's right, that's so you're, right. You're not only at risk from you know, other evildoers, but you're also at risk if you get caught, you're, you're likely to spend uh, a lot of time in jail, so. And it, those, those uh, punishments are increasing. I remember in the, uh, the late 80s, early 90s, when we really didn't have the Digital Rights Act that we have now in, in, inscribed and codified into federal law, the punishments were just a slap on the wrist. They were pathetic. And now we're seeing some people do some serious jail time. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy because that's a deterrent. As, and that's my way of thinking. What do you think about that? I mean, big penalties for cybercrime. Yeah, uh, well, Certainly the environment for a while where there was a little cooperation, you know, internationally on it and, and the, they, they, they were using, you know, uh, obsolete like wiretap laws to prosecute people. Right. And so the, um, so they, they uh, weren't doing, as you said, very, very, very much time seemed, uh, you know, not equitable with the, the actual crimes because it can, this is, can cause a lot of damage. I mean, hacking, you know, costs billions and billions of dollars and causes a lot, a and lot, collateral a lot damage of damage. Too. So I was, I was reading the latest statistics in uh, 2017. The average United States breach of a company, the average was $7.91 million per breach. That's the average. If you're a small or medium-sized company, you're out of business. You, no one's got that war chest if it's a small or medium-sized business. If you've got more than 10 million in the bank, you're a big business. 
No one's got that kind of money. So one breach, you're done. So That's the, a lot of damage. So the time kind of needs to fit the crime. So it, it, it definitely needed to be, you know, in, yeah, they need to raise in, the in case where, where, where they needed to, uh, you know, to, 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 to have stronger penalties and stronger laws. So maybe uh, the people doing these and getting into these, uh, the dark side, starting out, maybe they, we just need to tell them it's not just about shutting down the banking system and giving everyone a fresh start. And I've heard that before. What if we just melt the whole system and start fresh? Well, that's great. But if, if you look, your parents have got a retirement savings you just blew away. And uh, somebody else is, is going to lose their house. And uh, somebody might be in another country, and all of a sudden they have access to no funds. You just melted the whole thing down, and you trapped a lot of people in some really bad situations. That you've physically hurt people. If somebody needed money for emergency medical treatment, now they don't have any, right? And the hospital's not going to say, well, hey, we'll give you that heart surgery for free. I, you've hurt a lot of people. And you, you hurt a company, and it's not just the company. You get mad. Say we, we got mad at, oh, I'm going to pick on Amazon for a while. We, we, we want to take Jeff Bezos down because we don't like Jeff Bezos for some reason. Jeff, I love you, man. I'm, I'm just using you as an example. Sorry, you were an easy target. So don't come after me. I love you. Uh, so we want to take on Jeff Bezos. And we just ruin the company. How many people work for that company that you also just trashed? No more. No more, right? You took out the whole company <laughs> yeah. and everybody that supplies them. Yeah. Exactly. All the people that sell them products. Uh, probably the truck drivers even. You've, you've heard... Just the collateral damage is, is remarkable. What other factors can we think of that we need to tell people, hey, when you hack, this is what you're really doing? Uh, yeah, well, when, when you, you, you're not only exposing yourself to uh, criminal you know, issues, but uh, let's say that you you hack into someone's system, you expose information about them. You might be, you, you, you might be uh, setting them up for who knows what kind of embarrassment or, or something if, if, if this information now becomes public uh, because of your, of, of your hack. Oh, how many lives were ruined because of Ashley Madison? Uh, yeah. Not that I can have a whole bunch of sympathy there. However, Still. it wasn't their business to do that, and mm -hmm. they, they really trashed a lot of lives. And yeah, if, uh, if someone gets a list of email addresses and that becomes public, then now my email address is known and I can get spear phishing attacks on me. Mm -hmm. So I can, I can be exposed too. Yeah, you're right. So these things can kind of you know, snowball. With our last 30 seconds, let's, uh, let's uh, talk up our program. Our right. IT and cybersecurity program at Cappy Atlanta Community College. I want you guys to come out there. We're starting up this August again. Uh, come out and get a cybersecurity certificate and start uh, building on your uh, associates in IT and maybe move on to a bachelor's degree someday. And uh, we teach the first two years at Cappy Atlanta Community College. Come out there, and Hal and I will get you up to speed. And I hope to see you there. Please come join us. It's a really inexpensive and great way to get your career started. And right now, cybersecurity, unemployment rate. Zero percent, and that's only because it can't be negative. All right, thanks for joining me, man. Come thanks, back next week again. and see the Cyber Underground. I'm Dave, and I love it that you came to see me again. Uh, until we see each other again, please stay safe.